Good afternoon everyone. Today I'd like to do a video about the easiest way to get Bluetooth sound into a an old boombox. Right, here's my Sanyo. This one is just about perfect. Uh, once I repaired a transistor on it, and I've been very loath to modify this Sanyo um, to add an auxiliary in, which is fairly straightforward with a radio like this. But I've wanted to leave it alone, I don't want to drill any holes in it, that sort of thing. So I bought the cheapest possible solutions on AliExpress. This I think costs $4.50 or something like that Canadian. This is an FM Bluetooth adapter. This one uses USB, which is more useful for around the house. Uh, most of these you'll see for car use have 12 volt supplies and this is a Bluetooth cassette tape adapter just like the cassette tape adapters we all use during the early days of the walk of the CD revolution in our cars before we had a car with a CD player which for me was a long time um, so this was I think about 15 15 dollars something like that this is very inexpensive stuff like 20 dollars on the table here tops so I thought, let's try them out. Let's see how they work with this one. And, uh, and, and let's do that and see which might be a useful option. I will say off the bat, this I think might work fairly well. This I don't have very high hopes for. So let's start with the creditiest idea. And that is this little thing. Um, claims to have, there's a manual, which I don't intend to look at. Um, it's got a few buttons, right, the usual plus minus Bluetooth adapter stuff. Um, you hold them down in some way to set the FM channel, which I've got to say, I have not bothered to determine. So we've got this plugged in. Let's see if I can get the sound routed to it from the computer. That looks okay. Um, There we go. Okay, so the sound's now rooted to it from the computer. It should be 87.5, which would be right off the end of the dial on this. So let's turn this on. Our radio, we've got a battery light. Let's get some signal on it. Okay. So it's not working on this. We're off the edge of the dial on this one. I'm going to turn over here and use a Sanjian radio that's just off screen. I didn't fail, but had a lot of hopes for, which is this old Panasonic RF 590. Okay, so you can see I'm just using one of my videos in the background as a uh, sound source for this. So it does in fact seem to be working. It sounds all right for this purpose. But let's uh, see if I can figure out how to get this to, uh, to a station that this radio will pick up because that's the real test. So we have here, as I said, I wouldn't, wasn't going to look at the manual, but I'm going to look at the manual. Uh, I'll try the English side. Uh, mine has red LEDs, not blue, which should be. Um, okay. Adjust the long hold the M button and the screen will start to flash to enter the FM adjustment. Okay. Long hold. Okay, that works. 881, we have a station. 885, we might get away with that. I'm going to try the other radio here for a second. We'll turn this on. Okay, so that's working. No. Okay, let's find a good spot in the dial here. So one of the things we... There it is. 
one of those worm gear kind of deals with um, grease, which is still good after this is. Oh, the antenna a little bit because the. In the 70s, early 80s, I think. Um, and this is really very nice tuning radio. It's a bit pleasant in that regard. But I had so. If you put it right in front of it, on top, it works pretty well. It did pretty well. So let's now, start. Now, but I do want to point something out. No stereo. This is a mono so, device. Wait there. So. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that this is limited in its use case, but um, it provides an acceptable option for certain purposes, or probably just for voice, I would think. Stations. This is a, you know, about 11 o'clock, 30, somewhere in there. There's a little crackle here, um, a little noise in the background. Quite well. We could there, this, this is switch it to mono. But it doesn't really matter, of course, because it's not stereo anyway. It tends to sort of lock in on signals because it does. So there we go. So it works as advertised, but um, yeah, don't expect too much. But it might be an option if you have an older FM radio that uh, that you want to, I don't know, get some talk radio on or something. Might work for that. But uh, I don't think it's a very good choice. So let's go to the next likely choice here, which is some sort of cassette adapter. Now this has a number of advantages. This one came with a charging cable. And the cassette adapter, this has the controls like you would have at the end of an inexpensive pair of uh, regular earphones. You've got the clicky button. And this is supposed to go into a tape deck. We'll put it in the right tape deck. And, uh, and then this connects via Bluetooth with your phone or computer or whatnot. So let's turn this on. Oh, I think there's a light because it jams it a bit. Yeah, I think there is a light. Here's the light. I think it's connected. Let me look at the computer here. Normally I connect it to my phone, of course. Yes, it appears to be connected. Let's set the sound to it. And we'll go back to my YouTube video here in the background and uh, jam that in there and hit play. All right. And that are uh, digital portable medium wave radio. And last night I decided I wanted to compare this with a radio Just that screen. I hadn't really tried in detail, but had a lot of hopes for, which is this old Panasonic RF. Yeah, you can see it's right in here. Six, a pretty big radio missing. So I don't know really well. What I did is I did a full band scan of the medium wave. That sounds pretty good to me. I'm going to try it in the other one because I'm actually I think I'm only hearing one channel which would be a bit of a problem. Explain what I got. Yeah. And it was just this jammed in. It came through very nicely. I should say one of the things I liked about this radio is it doesn't have a... Although we're getting some rattles and whatnot, this is caused by this, uh, the mechanism in here. Let's try this one again. Maybe if I root the cable a little better. I did got to admit I tried this. Be there we go, that's better. Early 80s, probably. Late 70s, early 80s, I think. Yeah, so that's a little um, better. And this is. So. What's the conclusion? What should we be using for our uh, our old radios? I think. 
I'm trying to shut it off here. Has it shut off? No. There we go. Okay. I think the cassette adapter remains a viable solution if you have an old boombox. I mean, this is just the cheapest one I could find, right? I'm sure you could do better than that. Um, this, I think, I probably wouldn't waste my time with, although it's a fun toy and I'm not upset to having spent four dollars and change on it. Um, but this, I think, is still a viable option if you have a, an old boombox and you want to get it working and want to do the least harm to it possible. That's the way to go. You don't have to touch it internally. Um, I have other videos, not about this radio, obviously, because I chose not to. I mean, I do have a repair of this radio, but I chose not to uh, put a, uh, an auxiliary in. But I do have a sharp that I put an auxiliary in on, and I have a video about that if you're interested in following that kind of process. Most of these radios, is particularly from this, this 80s era, but even later on, the uh, the tape amplifier and the amplifier for the speakers and whatnot is one unit and the radio is a separate unit. And that makes sense if you think that they'll need different radios for different markets, right? And also the radio might be up here, right? Or it might be in a different position relative to the tape deck. And that means that there's a cable that goes between the radio and the, uh, and the main board that has the amplifier on it. And that you can intercept and put in a plug if you like. And uh, that's what I've done with that sharp. 